How's it going? And welcome back to another Pro Guys Wild Rift video. I'm never gonna lose a Kangas in a 1v1, but you can call me Nathan Ng, and I'll be showing you guys the only jungle guide that you'll ever need for Wild Rift. We work together with our analyst Kirks, who's reached Challenger on Wild Rift and League of Legends PC to give you the best information possible. Are you interested in learning more about how to reach the rank that you desire? Well, then let's go. Let's start off with the basics first so we can all hit a common ground in terms of knowledge about the game. Regardless of what concept you want to teach, it is important that there's a certain base level of information given before delving too deep into advanced concepts. The role of a jungler is different from a laner. Whereas laners fight enemy minions and champions alike, the jungler will start with killing neutral monsters. Those monsters grant experience and gold and are your primary source of income for the first few minutes of the game. Contrary to laners, junglers play inside the fog of war for the majority of the game which allows them to catch their opponents off guard quite frequently. Moreover, the jungle is split into two sides for each team. Both of these sides feature three camps filled with unique monsters that can be slain for income. After killing a camp, it takes about one and a half minutes to respawn for a normal camp and two and a half minutes for the buff. To keep track of those respawn timers, Riot implemented symbols on the minimap that can help you indicate the camp spawn timer. This information can also be used for enemy camps as it grants you a way to potentially trap away passing champions. Before we continue with today's video, be sure to check out our Discord in the description below. At the moment, we're running a huge skin giveaway, and if you're on the server and participate, you'll have a chance to win 1 out of 24 skins. Not enough yet, we also have looking for group channels on there that help you find people to play with. Should you miss out on these opportunities? Hell no. So, see you there. Next up is the bread and butter summoner spell for junglers, our lovely smite and it comes with different variations. Using Smite 4 times on monster camps allows you to evolve it into a new type of Smite that can also be used to cast on enemy champions. There are two different types of Smites and both of them do something slightly different. The very first is the Challenging Smite or the so-called Red Smite. Upon casting it on the enemy champion, it's going to deal 28 to 174 damage in true damage. That damage scales with your level and more than that it also grants you bonus adaptive stats in the form of AD or AP. The other Smite at our disposal is the Chilling Smite. That's why it deals the same amount of damage as a challenging one but steals 20% of the enemy's movement speed for 2 seconds. So what spot are you going to choose? Both have their inherent advantages and can be utilized in different situations. For example, a Rengar can make more use out of the challenging smite simply for the fact of how its champion works. The additional AD really packs a punch and should not be underestimated. Ever. However, there's even more to smite as a summoner spell. We all know that it deals quite a bit of damage to monsters and we've learned about the little tricks of the evolved smites. But there's also something a lot of people disregard in clutch situations. Even the unevolved smite can be used as a factor inside of a fight. By casting smite on a monster, you're healing yourself for 70 plus 10% of your maximum HP bar. Especially in a very sketchy situation in which you're very dependent on every single sliver of HP, you can realize that smite on a monster can make all the difference. And that's not all. We've still got more coming. As a jungler, Smite grants you buffs and a temporary debuff at the same time. The buff comes with the Tooth and Nail. You automatically gain 10% more damage to jungle monsters and damaging them burns for damage over time. Additionally to the burn effect, you're also restoring extra health for that duration. On the other hand, we have a buff and a debuff combined into the Hunting License. In trade for getting 20% more bonus XP from monsters, we're also temporarily earning 20% less gold and XP from minions. If this buff wasn't in place, we'd see some pretty crazy changes to the meta and a lot of champions would probably run Smite by default. After so much theory on just a summoner spell alone, it's time to take a small break and reach our question of the day. How much Wild Rift do you play? Are you grinding it up to make sure you reach a dream rank, or maybe just go pro? Or are you casually gaming a few matches in a week? I'm interested to hear what you guys have to say, and I can't wait to read it all in the comment section down below. An interesting part about the jungle as well is the power of buffs. We have a lot of different buffs that all cater to different needs ranging from normal buffs to team wide dragon or baron buffs. For this part, let us take a quick look at the red and blue buff first. After slaying the blue sentinel, the killer is awarded with a buff that regenerates mana and energy regardless of being in combat or not. Outside of combat, it also grants a lot of health regen. Here's how you can make use of that information. In the later stages of the game, where every single action matters, being forced to recall is something that can lose you the game. However, with the blue buff, you can just simply wait out of range for a bit and heal up passively. Consequently, you're not forced to give up too much in territory in comparison to leaving the scene entirely. The other buff awarded is the Slayer of the Brumbleback. With its buff, your auto attacks apply a true damage burn effect on the enemy as well as a pretty nasty slow that's even stronger if you're a melee champion. In fights, this could also be applied as it allows you to chase down enemies that would normally be a little bit too nimble for you to catch up to. With this, we're now moving to the bigger picture of things, the neutral objectives, starting with the Scuttle Crab. This little crustacean inhabitant and its twin brother spawns at 125 and patrol the river on both parts of the map. 
Killing it grants you a huge chunk of XP and leaves behind a little circle that grants you vision. Therefore, junglers love taking it and they'd even give up their life for it as we've seen many times in Wild Rift. You might say it's the very first point of conflict in the game. Ideally, the laners closest to the crab come over to assist you in times of need. However, that's not always possible. When you go for a crab, you must check the map and see where the lanes are and how they're looking at the moment in time. If your laner is pushed under his turret with an entire wave, then he can't magically come. And even if the mid laner rotated, it would be extremely dumb to do so. The gold value of the wave is significantly higher than the crabs. Moreover, since he didn't kill all of these minions, he's probably going to be behind in levels, which matters a lot. Please be aware of people's lane states and don't just expect them to back you up when you're committing to a bad play. I've seen too much of that happening and a lot of people use the words mid diff or whatever diff way too many times. Just because something didn't work out the way you wanted, it doesn't automatically mean someone else is at fault. If you want a perfect understanding of those things, you might need to play every role and get a solid grasp on every matchup to make the argument about it. If you hadn't done so, then refrain from spamming mid gap, as it won't help you to say that anyway. To give you a few questions to help you determine lane priority, I'm going to give you a few questions to help you determine lane priority. Where is the wave currently? Where is it being pushed? And who can move to it first in terms of positioning? In addition to that, you can also add specific matchups. A Ziggs can't magically walk after Nikali into the fog of war. If Ziggs wants to move, the Kali needs to be either stuck under turret or in a position where she cannot do anything about his rotation. And let me tell you this, the moment a Ziggs walks into an Akali, he is instantly dead. He needs to keep his space and always respect her power. With that said, we're now going to be going for large objectives. After 4 minutes, the very first dragon spawns and killing it awards a major team-wide buff. There's 4 different versions of these elemental dragons and they all grant a different buff. The dragon itself has a 4 minute respawn timer and after slaying 4 of those, the elder dragon spawns. Don't get me wrong, all dragons have their use and surely offer benefits for the team, but losing them isn't going to be the reason to spam surrender. There is a huge misconception about dragons. They don't automatically win you the game. Yes, they make it easier, but gold makes it easier as well. Especially as a jungler, you'll be put under a lot of pressure. Even if your entire team ends, they still expect you to magically get dragons, but you can't and you shouldn't listen to them. In all honesty, there's only one major game-changing dragon in the game, and it's the Elder Dragon. It doesn't respawn, and it grants a major buff to the Slayer's team that is far better than any other dragon buff. However, the more elemental dragons that you've slain, the better the elder buff is going to be. So before a dragon spawns, assess the situation. Think about how realistic it is for you to get that dragon or just to win a fight prior or after. If you come to the conclusion that it's not reasonable to go for it, communicate it and take away something else from the enemy. Always trade something for something and never give anything away for free. The next objective is immensely overvalued by players. The Rift Herald spawns at 6 minutes into the game and can only be slain once. Killing Herald grants 300 gold and using it close to the lane sends it towards the enemy base. On its way, it's going to charge at the enemy structures dealing quite a bit of damage to it. Nevertheless, you should always consider the investment you're trying to be making by spending too much time taking it. And you want to ask yourself, is the Herald really required for you to get that turret or you can just take it away without the loss of tempo? Personally, I'd view the Herald as an objective that you only want to take in trades for something or if you cannot take down the mid outer turret without it. But yet again, even if you happen to lose this one, it's not going to be losing you the game. The last big objective comes in the form of Baron Nasher. This purple worm spawns at 10 minutes and has a 3 minute respawn timer that grants a hefty buff that empowers not only recalls but also minions. Those little fellas are now significantly harder to take down and deal a lot more damage. Oh yeah, and the worm grants you a flat amount of cash, 200 to each member of the team and that adds up to 1000 gold. So that is why you'll see a lot of teams trying to get one, but beware, Baron Nasher is a bit stronger than the other objectives that we talked about. He deals a lot more damage and is therefore riskier to take in comparison to the other objectives. Consequently, killing it upon spawn is kind of hard unless the team is enormously fed. With all that in mind, please think through what you're trying to get out of it. At worst, you can wipe out your entire team and grant the enemy team a way back into the game. Now, let's take a look at jungle pathing. To find the most impact as a jungler, you need to think about your clear. What camps do you want to take and in what order do you want to do that in? For example, as an Evelyn, you can take down red buff, chickens, wolves, blue buff, and then you're ready to be at scuttle crab when the clock hits 125. You'll be level 4 after killing the crab, and you may transition to the enemy's krugs, or just get on with level 5. With that, you reach your power spike and you may start killing people on repeat. A thing that you have to factor in when choosing your path is the isolated jungle matchup. Who are you playing against and is he even stronger than you early on? 
The most prominent example of this is Lee Sin permanently invading your jungle. Therefore, we need to strategically place down our wards to avoid dying to such shenanigans. By doing so, you get yourself the information needed to trade something in return without giving Lee Sin anything for free. Keep in mind that you can also choose a very cheesy pathing depending on what champion you're playing. The more aggressive, the more potential for snowballing. The risk also scales similarly with the reward. So be aware of what you're doing as it can go very wrong very fast. Anyway, you can be very creative and have a lot of different paths and they can work especially well if you base them off of the information that you've acquired earlier. Such as, the laner that you're ganking has no summoner spells or he doesn't have vision because it was cleared. The last part I want to speak about is jungle terminology that is very important. One thing a lot of players don't do, especially in lower elo, is to go ahead and leash the first camp for their jungler. Leashing refers to you helping your jungler to take down the first buff. This speeds up the jungle clear by a lot and helps them reach the full functionality of the champion way earlier. But you don't want to stick around for too long as you don't want to lose any XP or gold in your lane. Another thing that is rarely done is so-called shadowing. When your laner is currently overextended and you have a feeling that they're about to get ganked, you can wait in the fog of war. Be it around a corner or in a bush, just make sure that you're in a position to help them out. You can also communicate that they'll act as a bait for your team to capitalize on. Last but not least, the most important thing is about melee champions on Wild Rift. Contrary to League of Legends, melee champions automatically deal AoE damage to grouped up enemies. Especially in the jungle, this can be utilized to significantly cut down your time to clear. It will take some time to absorb all that information, but don't worry, you'll get there. We at Pro Guides are happy to see you grow as a player, and if you have any questions, we probably have a video on that. Or just ask them in the comments, we would love to answer it. With that, we're going to be ending today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching, and if you like our content, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel so you never miss out on anything Wild Rift again. Don't miss out on our giveaways, and don't forget to tell me about our question of the day in the comments down below. With all that being said, stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.